What's up YouTube, it's your boy Sean, we're back with another video. Today we're gonna be talking about statue collecting for dummies, a beginner's guide to statue collecting. We're gonna be talking about a little bit of this, statue collecting sizes, costs, payment plans, everything, the whole source, but let's get into it. But before we do that, make sure you like and subscribe, let's do it. Let's see So you've seen some statues, but you don't know where to get them from. Um, the main companies that you can probably get statues from is Sideshow Collectibles, XM Studios, Prime One Studios, Iron Studios, Hot Toys, um, and many, many more. There are tons of different companies that sell statues. Normally, different companies um, specialize in different things. You have things like Hot Toys, Iron Studios, they usually do a little bit smaller um, statues. You have XM Studios, Prime One, Sideshow. Um, they normally do, well, Sideshow does a collection. They do literally everything uh, to the smallest to the biggest, the life size, right? Um, Prime Studios, Prime One Studios and XM Studios, they specialize in one fourth and one third scale statues. Um, those are normally the companies that you can visit to get your statues from. Um, and you may see things on Sideshow that you won't see on Prime One but is made by Prime One. Reason being is because uh, what happens is a company like a Prime One or XM Studios, um, sometimes they're, you know these statues are made overseas and you know distributing and things like that can get a little um, complicated. So they'll distribute the statue, they'll make the statue and distribute it through Sideshow. So you'll go to Sideshow's website and order a Prime One statue from their website. Um, and you know, it's the same process, nothing's different, right? So those are the main companies um, that you can get statues from. So you see the statues and there's tons of different sizes, which size works best for you? I did a video, you can click on the link up here and you'll see that video, but I did a video going more in depth about what statue size means and how do you navigate through that, right? There's one fourth scale, there's the one third scale, there's one six, one, um, one tenth, uh, there's half scale, um, there's life size, right? There are so many different scales. Um, if you click this link, you can talk a little bit more about it. I go more in depth there, but as a quick synopsis, uh, it all depends on your size, uh, your, how much room you have in your home, um, what your budget is, and what do you want to collect, right? Um, and I, what I mean by what you want to collect, what are you passionate about? Is it Batman? Is it Superman? Is it Marvel, um, is it you know, uh, pop culture? I mean, I don't know. It work, you know, everything is different. Everyone is different in what their preferences are. So it all depends. Those are the different factors. If you look at that video, you'll have more information. So one of the questions I asked myself whenever I first started collecting was, what is a what is the best statues to collect? Right? What is you know should I be collecting um, Marvel statues versus DC comics or should I be doing pop culture versus movies or I mean what 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 works for you right um, what I've seen is most most times statues resell in a whole more value when they're Marvel statues right um, not to say that DC statues or pop culture movies um, all those different statues are not good statues there's anime statues as well all these statues are great statues and things that are um, very uh, remarkable works of art but when you start talking about holding value and resale and things like that Marvel's always gonna take the cake there reason why um, to be honest with you I, I really don't know I think there's just maybe popularity um, but Marvel is usually uh, what holds it holds the value the most so um, to sum up the point it doesn't really matter um, what the best statue is there's no, no there's no best statue it all depends on what your preference is and what you're passionate about what's a good addition size whenever you go to sideshow.com you'll see numbers uh that says addition size to the right of the statue um it may be as low as 150 300 500 a thousand um what's a good addition size normally um you know the lower the addition size the more valuable and the harder the statue is to get right um, I've seen statues where the addition size is, you know, 150. That means that they're only making 150. Once they make those 150, they are done. Um, and you won't be able to get them anymore. 
Um, and what that also means is that they'll be harder to find on resale and the resale price for them will, will be marked up a significant amount. So um, you, for those types of statues that have a lot of hype and things like that, you want to try to get to them first because if you don't get to them first, um, it may be a little bit harder to get them uh, aftermarket. Now, um, as it you know, as it pertains to other edition sizes, um, three to five hundred is normally what I see. You know, where the edition size is for an average statue. Um, sometimes they go up to a thousand, sometimes more. Um, I usually see that you know the smaller statues, like the one tenth scale, um, sometimes like the one six scale, one six scale, and things like that. They have larger edition sizes because they're a little bit cheaper, so more people will buy them, right? For example, if you have a $900 uh, one-third scale statue, um, you know, you may have 300 people buy that statue, right? Versus um, if you make that same statue at a one-tenth one scale, right, for 100 bucks, you'll probably have a lot more people buy that statue. Um, if it's, you know, if the quality is good and it's a good statue, there's a lot of different variables. But, um, you know, like I said, it all varies. It's all different. So it just depends. So as you're roaming through Sideshow.com, Prime 1, XM, wherever, you'll see different statue sizes, right? You have maquettes, you have premium formats, you have life-size busts, you have all these different things. And what does it all mean, right? So let's get into it. So the first type of statue we have is the maquette. The maquette is usually going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit more detailed. Um, they're just going to look really, really good. Um, I think the maquette normally, um, and don't quote me on this, but normally when you talk about a maquette, you're talking about the detail of the statue. Um, the maquette is usually going to be very detailed. It's going to look really, really good. Um, I really love maquettes. That, that's, that's usually where I try to, um, you know, lean towards. Next on the list, you have the dioramas. The dioramas are the kingpins of statues, in my opinion, right? So the dioramas are usually going to be um, something like a huge, um, a huge statue that encompasses different um, aspects of a uh, scene. So, for example, there's uh, there's the Justice League versus Di Dark Side diorama, where there's there's Dark Side in the middle, and he's literally actively posing and fighting the Justice League. You have Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, uh, Martian Manhunter, Aquaman, The Flash, all these different pieces on the actual statue fighting dark side right that's what you call a diorama um, and there's also things like um, the x-men versus sentinel right where the x-men are literally all pieced together you know um, around sentinel and they're fighting right those dioramas are usually huge and is is really um, giving you the full picture of a scene um, and something that's happening normally a fight that's happening and it's um, really, really detailed and looks really, really good. So how will you know if a statue will have good resale value or not? Two things to consider. The concept and the addition size. The concept being what is the uh, person doing? Who is the person? What is the statue? And, you know, where is, you know, where is the statue created from? Is it created from this comic book, um, was it, you know, the Batman, the Killing Joke, um, something like that, a very popular story. Um, the statue from that would resell um, for a lot and probably sell out a lot fat, uh, faster than, you know, a normal statue, right? Um, you know, also too, like what is, what is the actual statue doing? What are they doing in the statue? Are they posing to, um, you know, fight or um, is, is the Joker, is he taking the picture? Um, I mean, I don't know. What, what, whatever the concept is, if it's a popular concept, it's a great concept, um, then, uh, you know, it may resell for a lot if it sells out fast, right? Let's say, for example, it's a good concept, it has a low edition size, let's say 200, um, and uh, sells out very quickly, and you want to resell it, right? It, it, you may be able to get a good premium for it, right? Versus if something that's kind of more um, more general, if there's a lot of something out there, for example, if there's a lot of, quote, let's just say, for example, a lot of uh, Wolverines out there, there's a lot of Wolverines out there, um, let, a lot of different options, someone may see yours and, you know, may want to go with something else that's maybe a little bit cheaper, right? One thing you also have to consider is um, 
what is the addition? Uh, is it still on sale whenever you're trying to resell it, right? So for example, let's say it has a higher addition size and it's been eight months since the statue released and you know, you're trying to resell it at this point, you don't want it anymore, and you go to sideshow.com and that same statue that you bought is still on sale on sideshow.com. What you have to consider is that why would someone purchase a secondhand statue from you for you know the same price or higher um, where they can probably get that same statue brand new from sideshow for the exact same price, right? So it's just something to uh to, to think about whenever you thinking about reselling a statue. Um, obviously, you know, the lower the addition size, the more valuable um, and, and the more, the longer a statue will hold its value. If you have a higher addition size, maybe like a thousand, two thousand, something like that, excuse me, it may, um, that statue may not, uh, you know, may not resell, right? You, it may be a year, two years, um, and that statue still hasn't sold all the way out on the sideshow.com. Um, and if it has not, then, you know, good luck trying to get that statue off your hands, right? You'll probably have to take a loss for it. So just a couple of things to consider whenever you're thinking about reselling a statue. So prices for statues. I know when I first started collecting, um, when I was looking at different statues on the different websites, I really had no idea if this statue was a good price, right? Um, but, you know, one thing that you should probably should know is the price of a statue all really depends on Two things, um, like I think I sort of hit on this earlier, um, the size of the statue, how big is it, and um, how popular is the statue. For example, you have a, um, and just also to the third thing, just how dope is it? I mean, sometimes, I mean, let's call it what it is. Some statues are doper than others, right? Um, some statue uh, companies and some sculptors do it a little bit better than others, uh, as it, you know, just varies from different statue to statue. So. Um, for example, prices for statues, you may have um, a statue that, uh, you know, that's a one, a one fourth scale. Um, and those are usually range from, uh, I think, 500 to or four or 500 to about eight to 900. That should be your range for a six scale. I think 800 would probably be tops for one fourth scale. Um, and then, you know, whenever you start talking about one third scales, uh, you can go anywhere from 900 to $1,600, right? Um, and, you know, as it relates to 1 sixth and 1 tenth scale, those will be, uh, you know, a little bit cheaper around the $100, $200 range, right? So it all just depends on uh, what you're looking for and what you're looking to get. Um, you know, the bust, they, those, those types of uh, statues, they vary um, in different uh, prices. They're usually a little bit uh, cheaper. Um, a life-size bust will be a little bit more. Uh, around the same price as like a one third scale, maybe like 900 to a thousand bucks. Um, you have the regular size busts that are a little bit cheaper, well, a lot cheaper. Um, I've seen some for, you know, 100, 200, 250 bucks. Um, it's a lot more manageable for the average person. Um, but going back to the original point, uh, the prices of statues just really depend on the size and, um, you know, the addition, right? Uh, most times you'll get, um, you know, some statues that that are like one tenth scale, and you know, some some companies like an Iron Studios, Iron Studios, they may make a lot of those one tenth scale statues, whatever whatever it is they're making, um, and uh, they may make a lot of them because you know a lot of people can afford those statues, and um, so they'll just keep making more, and, all right, and it doesn't make it any less, well, it does make it a little less value if you just think about the the basic concept of it, but. I mean, it is what it is, right? Um, versus, you know, a, a sixteen hundred dollar statue. Um, that company may cost a lot for them to make. That company may take a lot of time, right? And they may not want to put out uh, a thousand of these statues, right? It'll bring the value of it down. So they may want to only do one fifty, two hundred, right, three hundred max, right? So it just all depends on what type of statue you're looking at. One topic that I like to discuss today is um, distributing, shipping on statues. Um, I know that when I first began uh, collecting, I was a little bit confused because I would go to, for example, a, a website like xmstudios.com and I would realize that their statues that they were releasing were not being released um, or shipped to the U.S. I kind of just wanted to talk a little bit about how that works. So how that works is you have a company like a XM Studios 
that is based um, in a you know a different country. Um, sometimes you know it just depends on the on the different uh, studios. It could be Singapore, Japan, um, whatever the case may be. And that company doesn't necessarily want to deal with uh, shipping all the way to a place like uh, America, right? So they may just ship, uh, you know, to Singapore, um, Japan, Hong Kong, et cetera, et cetera, right? So how do you get in, how do you obtain these statues, right, that are uh, only being distributed in those countries? Usually how it works is you have to purchase those statues secondhand. And what that means is uh, you have third parties such as, um, I'm going to give my man a shout out here, Jim Mint Collectibles. What happens is he has contacts in those countries and what happens is those contacts will purchase that, that statue from, uh, let's say, XM Studios and it will get shipped to Singapore, for example. And then uh, that, third, that contact will then ship it to uh, Jim Mint in, uh, in America here. And then Jim Mint will then send it to you, right, in wherever, whatever state you're in, right? So though that's, there's, there's a little uh, finagling on, on how that works. Um, sometimes you may see uh, Sideshow is the distributor of, uh, you know, a, a company like an XM Studios or a Prime One or something like that. Um, what happens is Sideshow is like the mecca, the, uh, the number one most popular uh, brand for statues. And so what happens is you may have an XM Studios uh, distribute, uh, uh, send their statues over to Sideshow, and Sideshow is a uh, company that is based out of California and America, and they will um, then take those statues and distribute them um, on their website and from California to uh, the various states here in the U.S. So um, I know that that's, that may have gotten a little bit confusing, but um, that's just sort of how it works. Um, you know, it gets a little bit confusing whenever you see uh, XM, which is one of my favorite uh, statue companies. They'll they'll create a dope, dope, dope statue, and you know it's not being shipped to the U.S. And it's like, like come on, man, it sucks, right? So the next topic I want to discuss today is purchasing statues and payment plans. How does that work, right? There's three ways you can do it. Number one, you can pay outright. Um, you know, pay the full. Let's say, for example, a statue is 500 bucks. You can pay the full 500 for the statue. Um, you can do uh, the second option is a payment plan, which is normally what I do. Because what you're learning in the statue collecting business, things are done ahead of time. Um, statues are previewed a year, year and a half, sometimes even two years ahead of time. And you know, I like to get on the pre-order list. Um, and how that usually works is, you know, you'll put down a deposit, a non-refundable deposit. Normally, you know, sometimes it's 100, 150 bucks. I think it really just depends on how much the statue is. And then from there, you'll pay a monthly, uh, a monthly bill, if you will. So, for example, a bill may be 70 bucks a month until the statue comes out, right? It may be eight months, 10 months, sometimes even 12, where you just pay, you know, that 70 bucks or that uh, 100 bucks or whatever, wherever it may be. And, uh, you know, at the end of that 12 months or eight months or whatever, you'll pay the shipping cost, whatever that shipping cost is, and then it'll get shipped to your home and you're done. Um, I know some people who may do it like that. Um, some people may put down just the deposit, right? They may put down a deposit for, uh, you know, what a statue and they may just want to wait and see if they really want it, right? But what, you're kind of playing a tricky game there because if you don't want the statue, what will happen is you'll lose that that deposit whatever that deposit is and i would hate for anyone to lose 100 150 bucks um you know if they don't decide they want a statue but it's almost like um, purchasing a home whenever you put down your earnest money um they the, the statue companies want to know that you're serious about purchasing the statue and they don't want to um just you know withhold this statue and just keep holding it indefinitely until um until you know forever right um, one thing I also want to note here as well is um, if you know at the at the shipping date if it's been 90 days since they have shipped the uh, the statue and you still haven't received it after 90 days they'll refund you um, your 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 money right uh, I think that's pretty fair um, I've heard stories about that that's never happened to me personally but I've heard stories about how that's happened um, and I think that's actually pretty cool that they would do that Insurance. That's one thing I want to discuss today. Um, should you insure your statues? To answer that question, um, I think it all depends on how much you have in statues. 
Um, for someone who may have a thousand or just a couple thousand dollars worth of statues, um, that may not be a thing for you, right? But if you have something, you know, five thousand, ten thousand, uh, sometimes even twenty thousand dollars worth of statues, ensuring that uh, the that those uh, fine works of art, which is exactly it's what it is, it's art, um, ensuring that art would be probably a good idea in my opinion. What happens is if you, you know, if there's, God forbid, a fire in your home or something, you know, stolen or whatever the case may be for the statue, um, if you don't have it insured, then, I mean, it's kind of just a loss, right? You've, you've taken a loss on that statue. But if you, you know, something happens, a fire burns down and you um, have $20,000 worth of statues, then you'll get that money and you can kind of begin to try to rebuild, right? And get your favors back, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm, not an, I'm not an insurance expert. Um, I won't be naming any names, uh, any recommendations or anything like that. I think that you should talk to your insurance professionals and decide what works best for you. The last topic I want to talk about today is loyalty programs. One of the coolest things I think about this statue game is uh, these different companies, they have their own unique loyalty program. And what that means is you'll create an account with this, with this whatever statue company. And for example, we'll just say sideshow.com. And what happens is you'll purchase your statues and every statue you purchase, you get money or points um, back, right? So for example, if you purchase a $1,000 statue, you may get uh, $100, right? And what happens is the more statues you buy, the more money you accumulate. You could potentially even get a, a statue for free, right? Um, you know, I think that's actually really, really cool. Um, and it keeps the ball rolling. It keep, there's an incentive to keep buying these statues. It's just something that um, I think is just really, really cool. Um, every every company's a little different and every policy is a little different. So there's no one way to uh, to name this and to you know say exactly how it works. Um, the the concept is all the same, but every company has their different quirks and how they like to you know distribute the money back. So that brings us to the end of this video. Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if any of this information was beneficial to you. Um, thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. <clears throat> Whoa, I need some water. Water, water. I love, uh, what's the name of that movie? Good Burger. That's what it was. What am I trying to say?